an approach called an ensemble approach. And we will explain that later. There are different type of the teaching in statistics. What we are doing and what we are following is the ensemble approach. In ensemble approach, we will consider some very similar physical systems with fixed number volumes or energy or all of them. This lecture will be about terminology of statistical. Why we needed to consider statistical physics is less technical than the next lectures. Next lecture will be a bit more detailed and mathematics. This, <coughs> this lecture is only the concept. Explain the concept and explain the path. I wanted to show that the path towards statistical description description of different systems and the many people even in the upper level get PhD still they don't know what's the <clears throat> what's the description what's the what's the important things in the theory so I want to explain that what's the meaning or what is the important things in the statistical physics. And the, sometimes you, if you are making the Google the statistical physics, you see that they're writing classical statistical huh? mechanics, or they write it the quantum mechanical. Or if you are very, very interested, you can find it that something called quantum field theory, a statistical quantum field theory, you know, all of this are big titles. So, before to go and study any of that, like classical statistical mechanics, quantum <coughs> statistical mechanics, statistical quantum field theory, and the, something very, very new is called the stochastic. A stochastic, a statistical quantum field theory. Field theory. Basically, I will tell you who was developed each one. So the classical statistical mechanics mainly we are uh, dead to the Boltzmann, the man, one of the physicists who. Sacrifice because he, he was he spent all of his life and the, to solve the the things which we call it ergodic theory. He spent all of his life on the ergodic theory, and finally because he didn't find any results, so he ended his life peacefully. <laughs> <laughs> and the quantum statistical physics actually started when the quantum physics started. So. The first calculation was done by the Planck, mm -hmm. so not exactly the Planck. Planck gave the idea of the photon yeah. as the particle who can carry the electromagnetic waves. <coughs> and uh, it's surprising to know that the Einstein was the first person who used the Max Planck calculations. He used the Planck concept to find the black body variations. So also the Planck, they took it uh, by the difference of the time. They considered that. But, but we are, we are, we are, uh, we are uh, we are giving the, uh, the guarantee to the Max Planck to start uh, something called a quantum statistical mechanics. But the modern statistical mechanics started very late, so it's around 1950 or 1945. During the World War II, it started actually. A statistical quantum field theory started by the work of the Soviet Union, Bogoliubov. Bogoliubov. I don't know I needed to spell it. Bogolyov and uh, Lando and uh, Lefschitz and uh, Pitovsky, Pitovsky 
So Pitalski is alive. He's a professor of theoretical physics in Trento University. He's a like, very old person. So today I started to consider a statistical quantum field theory. You will see that we never talk about that because it means you know about the quantum field theory. So this is actually the chapter uh, 11 of the patio and uh, some special topics of the Huang. We now don't talk about that. We will talk about the classical statistical and quantum. And there is something very new, it's called the stochastic statistical quantum field theory approach. So it's very, very new and uh, started by the work of Bill Hu. Bill Hu and uh, other people. So it's very complicated. Actually, this is about the system with uh, many degree, many uh, parts, actually, many number of the particles, if you can call it this particle. And uh, they are doing very, very uh, stochastic behavior. Stochastic means that uh, they are not following the predictability. So out of predictability. Predict so <clears throat> we don't talk about that. This is an advanced topic, actually. So <clears throat> today I want to talk about just uh, the basic foundation of the classical and quantum statistical physics. But you need to remember that you know, any quantum mechanical system, quantum mechanical system, has some Classical limit. Huh? Formally, formally, if you <coughs> formally if you consider the the classical limit, classical means means for the classical limit for the any quantum mechanical system means that if you consider the average average quantum mechanical average because we have a two type of the average and I will explain it. Quantum mechanical average of all quantum mechanical objects. Object means we call it these operators. It could be any quantity which we can measure, like the position, huh? Position or momentum, p momentum. You have a basic idea about the quantum mechanics or energy. All of them, if you're making the averaging from that, but averaging over what? If you know the state of the system and make the averaging of all of this quantity, any other than or any other things, angular momentum, the large, uh, the long life behavior of the average tends to the classical mechanics. I mean that for very long time, if you're waiting, finally the average uh, show you that the, the same quantity as you can find from the classical mechanics. So classical mechanics can be found by the very long time averaging of the quantum mechanical objects. But forget about the balls. If you, in any equations, if it is possible to take the limit of h bar equal to zero, h is the Planck constant, one of the fundamental Minus 34 Q per second. And h bar is the h over 2 pi is the Dirac constant. Huh? Dirac constant is proposed by the Dirac to, to explain the quantum mechanics. And h, explain, h introduced by the Planck to study the spectrum of the black body radiations. So they are a little bit different. So if, if, if you find the quantity in quantum mechanics, by any way, I don't uh, go in the detail of mathematics. So you need to know, in quantum mechanics, you need to solve the Schrodinger equation, find the solution for the Schrodinger equation. Even in chemistry, we do that. Huh? What you are talking about, the orbitals, are just the configurational form of this solution of the Schrodinger equation. The orbital S, orbital SP, all of them uh, are actually they are all the conf are the spatial con configuration configurations spatial configuration distribution. You see, it's a very long title of solution of the Schrodinger equation, huh? Mm -hmm. Solution of 
Schrodinger quotients. All of these orbitals. So, so in quantum mechanics, you need to find a solution for the Schrodinger quotient if it is possible. I will tell you if it's possible because exactly today I want to give you some example that never can be solved exactly. And that was the motivation to use the statistic, statistical methods. You know, statistics is a branch of mathematics, so it's working with probability, with some uncertainty. In a statistical mechanics, you never can talk about the one piece of the system or something. What are you talking about? Just averaging. Like the averaging of the grade of the students. So if you want to say that a course will, was uh, useful for the student, you know, your one strategy is that you just consider the average. So average is, uh, is the one measure of a statistical thing. And the reason that the physics entered the, the statistics methods was that, I will explain you that, if you consider the system more than two parts, mm -hmm. almost it's impossible to find a solution for the system. Even if you consider, for example, look at that, you have a sun and moon and earth. They make a three object. It's almost impossible to consider the dynamic of this three-body system exactly. What you can find are just approximation. So if you are talking about the system, system means a particle, so the situation is more dramatic. Because um, as I will write for you, when you are talking about the thermodynamical system, the statistical system, actually we have the number of the number of the particles or parts of the system, it's in the order of 10 to 3. So just consider that this huge number of the parts for the system make uh, actually impossible to find the, the behavior of the system. Also, we are talking about the big volume, but uh, let me just talk about the number. What is the, what is the main problem of classical mechanics? What do you think? What is the main problem of classical mechanics? What is the big question in classical mechanics? Can the smallest, 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 smallest. No, no. What is the final things which you want to find in classical mechanics? You want to find the trajectory, huh? Trajectory. You want to know that if the particle started here, mm -hmm. your mo its motion yeah, with the velocity, be. yeah, with velocity vi, for example, we can call it this velocity. And the position qi, for example, no? initial position, vector can be, it can be vector. Yeah. And uh, if a specific form of the force exists on that, so you need to know that the rho, the law of the force, no? yeah. like gravitational force, like mm -hmm. any other force. The main question of classical mechanics is that what is the final destination? Destination. <coughs> I'm not sure you ever think about the classical mechanics like that. But this is, the, this is the main question in classical mechanics. If you be able to find the final destination, or final state, <coughs> or final position and momentum huh? yeah. of your system, so it means that you solve it your system. So if I can find that VF as a function of course the time and the the position as the function of the time. So we use Q for the position. If you can find it that, base it on the, this, which we call it initial conditions, that's all. That's all the classical mechanics. Okay, if you want to use Hamiltonian, Lagrangian, Jacobi Hamilton equations, Classical mechanics. It, it doesn't matter for me. So for, for us it's important that you have a force and the force is a vector and you have a momentum for the system and you know that, that uh, this is the second law of the mechanics. But the question is that if I give you the force, what will be the momentum? And from the momentum you can get the position because momentum is mass dq dt or dr dt it depends on which notation you use r and q are the same 
by r or q we mean x as a function of y x a function of z. So this is the question of the classical mechanics. Classical mechanics is very predictable. Yeah. What does it mean? So we know the basic of the world. <laughs> If this is a car and it starts to go from here to the other city and if, you, if the engine works perfectly, so this is definitely the car after some time will reach this point. Yeah. Uh, and we are not talking about the car accident, just as a particle. Or if you, if you throw in this pen, for example, from here, according to the gravity, so it finally will be, yeah, reach yes, reach the button. No? Yes. We understand this is a very, very uh, thing. And the, 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 the other thing is that the pass, this is we call it pass, classical pass, is unique. Hmm? If you throw the ball from here, it goes and uh, reach this point. It never goes like that. It never goes like that or any other uh, form. Unique. You have it just unique. Here the unique pass is lane, I know, is a linear, but not always. Anyway, it's a special case because of gravity is in this direction, and if you solve the equation, you definitely will find that the, the line which started from here to here, which will, the pass will be line, linear, actually. But not always. You know, you have this example. Yeah? If this is a gun, for example, uh, and they shoot the ball, so you know that, 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 that this is will be parallel. Huh? Yeah. Uh, but this, uh, not always it will be linear. But anyway, I want to tell you that even with that, if you fix it for me the velocity, mm -hmm. and if you fix it for me the initial position, mm -hmm. you can shoot this from here, shoot from here, shoot it, it's not different for me. But I can definitely, and if you give me the force, I know that here only there is, for example, gravity minus mg. Mass is the mass and g is the gravity. So we have a gravity in this direction. So in this case, I can definitely tell you that the ball will be here. Of course, there is a, some a little bit error maybe happen here. But for example, maybe when the ball are, is moving, maybe there is a friction force. Huh? Yeah, friction. From the air. Or maybe the, the medium is viscous. For example, if you shoot your ball inside a, a tank of the oil, for example, no? If this is the oil, and if you shoot your ball from here, so it doesn't go exactly like that because the, the, there is a viscosity for the oil. And uh, a little bit may be changed. I, I, I don't know exactly which will be the exact form because we need to solve this question, problem. We need to integrate this equation, classical mechanics, and find what will be the final. Or you know that if uh, this is a tunnel and this tunnel uh, wind, it wind, for example, wind tunnel. If you shoot the ball, okay, the ball uh, <coughs> like that. So again, the wind velocity will be affected. The, we call it W as a wind velocity, for example, just the name. So. The pass will be defected. <coughs> I don't think that was very easy. For example, this question, shooting the gun, for example, if you consider the friction, first time only solved it around the World War I. When they, when they start the war, mm -hmm. so they try to shoot, you know, the mm -hmm. Germans want to destroy the Paris, Paris want to. So this is a crazy wall. So they find that they need to correct. For example, before they think that if they shoot in the 45 degrees, so it will be the maximum bolt and it will be attack this. They try that and they say that no, with 45 percent, I don't know, it will be here. Yeah. They try, 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 and finally they find that the friction of the wind, of this parameter, are extra parameters. They corrected the calculation. And, the, 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 and you need, even for this question, for this question with, uh, with friction force, I can show you that you cannot exact find the exact solution. Because the differential equation, this is called a differential equation, huh? you have a derivative of the time and this function. 
Even for this easy case, you cannot solve the suit. You cannot find the exact. You need to use the correction. You need to use the approximation method. So even this classical question cannot be solved if you have the friction. With no friction, you can do that. So uh, that was the statement of classical mechanics. <laughs> statement of classical mechanics is to find in the past. So you know that, that since long time after the actually around 300 years, the classical mechanics was the, the only theory mm -hmm. and the govern all the physics and the science. But the, this scenario changed after the, the new concept of the relativity and these things uh, introduced it to the physics. So that was the statement of classical mechanics. So just uh, look at that, what will be the statistical classical mechanics? This will be the statistical description of the classical system. Huh? A statistical. A statistical means working with average. Huh? Working with average, average and these things. Statistical classical mecha statistical description description of classical system. I mean, if if you have a enough large number large number of the systems classical systems, you need a statistical mechanics. If you have a if you wanted to shoot, for example, a thousand balls in the different positions, with different velocity, you know, it will be a completely crazy idea. And if you want to know that how many of the balls will be attacked this or attacked this. So it's very, very complicated classic, uh, classical question. You need a statistical method. You need a statistical method means that you need averaging. So you need the average. So this is a classical statistical mechanics. But because any classical system has some quantum mechanical limit or vice versa. <coughs> so we can just talk about the statistical quantum systems. Anyway, we, we will solve also some question when the system is almost classical. So you don't need it to start from the quantum mechanics. We will start from the case because classical mechanics is the approximation of the quantum mechanics. Huh? If you go to the tiny size, huh, you cannot use the fmr. You, the, quantum, the Newton law fails if, if the size of the system is tiny. So it looks like that the better to start from the quantum mechanics and the path to classical mechanics. But anyway, we will solve some question when the system is considered completely classical. So. Let me, that was, the, that was the statement of the classical mechanics. You, there are two approaches to classical mechanics. One is the Newton law, and the one is the, uh, using the uh, Lagrangian and Hamiltonian dynamics. And the, with Lagrangian and Hamiltonian, you are related with familiar, but we will use that. So I will keep it this for the next lecture. I wanted to, next lecture, I will give you the Lagrangian and Hamiltonian in the upper level, just. Now, I want to tell you that the statement of quantum mechanics, what, what, uh, what is the quantum mechanic goal? Final goal of quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, first of all, the size of the system is tiny. It's considered a tiny. 